And welcome. Today we're going to talk about vintage t-shirts. This shirt is vintage like me. No, we're not really going to talk about vintage t-shirts today. What I would like to talk about is ice or snow or winter wonderlands. There's a lot of great ways to do ice. I've seen some great crafters do some great ice concepts. I want to show my three favorite today. So I'm going to show you what those are and how to do it. So let's go to the craft room. Are we going to the craft room? Okay. Okay, here we go. You're going to see a lot of techniques here. Cut out the shape you want. I'm going to use a wire foam cutter here. You could use a knife if you wanted to. Cut out the shape you like. I'm going to make four somewhat straight walls of ice for expediency's sake. Now, here you'll see that I'm not going to be holding my piece down flat. I'm going to be moving it up and down somewhat. And this is going to give me that, that zigzag or jagged effect on the bottom, as you can see. I'm going to do that all the way around. And as my personal preference, I'm going to do this on the top and the bottom. Some people prefer just, just the top. All right, here we go. Top, bottom, both. And that's the effect you're going to get. Just like that. All right, and here's the technique. I'm doing virtually the same thing, but I'm using a box knife. You'll notice that I'm not trying to make this a nice smooth cut. I'm digging in there and chipping some of that out. So give it a really natural look. All right, here we go. We're going to use a soldering iron for this technique. This is something I picked up when I was making some cave terrain. But I found that this works just as well on ice. It's very fast. It does not leave a mess, as you can see. And there you have it. Now here I'm using an open flame. The reason I'm doing this is because this melts down the sharp points that develop as I'm using the soldering iron. And this smooths it down quite a bit and gives it more of a melted look, which is exactly what we want. Burn, baby, burn. Mm. All right, this technique here, we're going to use open flame as well. It's a little bit different, as you'll see. There we go. Now with this technique, the open flame is our, our main manipulator. This works great if you're making stone as well. The only difference, of course, is the colors you'll use to paint it. This is actually the technique I used when I, was, when I made a, a type of stone hinge, and it looked really well. <clears throat> and there you go, the pieces side by side so you can compare and contrast.
And we're going to finish this one up. I'm just going to put dimples in this with the open flame. You don't want these to look uniform, so you do, you'll do some up, up higher, some down lower. You'll do a nice little blend, and this gives it a, uh, a very natural melted appearance. And this can be used to, uh, this can be used to make worn stone as well. No fuss, no muss. White paint. All right, for the first piece, we're going to do the uh, white base over top of the green foam. And as you can see, I'm going to let some of this green foam show through. This is just one method, of course. All right, I took the glue gun to this, and I'm just going to let that drip down a bit. And this gives us the icicle effect. I'm going to dry brush just slightly some white over top of that to blend it in a bit. And there you have it. An ice wall. Alright, some light blue. I've thinned down the paint a bit because on this piece I want the green to show through a little bit. Through the blue. This gives us a nice prismatic effect. Looks really pretty. Very icy. Very pure. Now we're going to put the white on top of that. Not too thick. Almost a dry brush. Not quite on the top. Now you'll see the paint brush streaks there. But I'm going to go back later in circular motions to get rid of that. On the side here we're just going to dry brush. Heavier near the top than the bottom and then blend it in. crevices and the cracks decide where the highlights go. She's as cold as ice! Okay, and there you have it. That's our blue base with the white over top. Now we're just going to go back and highlight the edges so that it'll stand out more and give us more light to reflect off of that. Beautiful, sir. Beautiful. It looks lovely. Brush, 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 brush. Alrighty, more white. Alright, now this is a little different from what you may be used to. You'll, you'll see we have a white base. And we're actually going to highlight with a darker color than the white. Typically we would do this with a lighter color. So we get some more of that, that baby blue. Really light blue. We're going to brush that over top just enough to where it brings out some of the edge. Now it's a little heavy looking now, but what we're going to do next, you'll see, we'll balance that out quite well. And there you go. This is very glossy, a really good product. This is a glue or a sealer, whatever you want to use it for. Like you want to put it on nice and thick. You can see it's almost, it's really a paste. You can 
globule in there really nice. And what I like to do is I'll dab it on the top edge and let that kind of drain down slowly. It, it dries very quickly. There you go. See right there? And I'm just going to play with those globs a little bit just to make them look a little more like natural icicles. Blend them in a bit. There we go. That's quite lovely. Poiple? What the heck am I using Poiple on ice for? Well, it's just a little interesting variation. You could use this for a frozen area of the Underdark. Or, um... I saw some beautiful pictures on the internet once where the ice was was glowing almost uh, reflecting a very purplish color you'll see I'm putting the white very heavy on the top and then that's going to get a little lighter as it gets near the bottom and there you have it there's our styles with some figs nearby to give you some size reference And this here we go. This shot shows much better the the color variation and what they what they look like next to each other, so that you can compare and contrast. So there's our four different styles. I don't always make ice, but when I do, it's four variations. Stay icy, my friend. Olé, olé, olé.